Hello everybody. Today we are going to be going over Math Out Work 10, Section 2.3, Length Conversions, on the job two, converting longer distances. So in this unit, we're gonna be converting long distances, meaning kilometers and miles and things like that. So the first uh, thing we have to look at is, it says, uh, Rias lives in Cornerbrook. Next month, he will be driving in the USA. <clears throat> he wants to get familiar with thinking in miles before traveling south. Okay. So you can see typical highway here in the US going, well, this would, I'm assuming, be in Florida because we have Orlando, Epcot, downtown Disney. And all these signs are giving you distances in miles. Up here in Canada, we would be used to kilometers. So here it's telling us, he researches the conversion between miles and kilometers. One mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers, and one kilometer is almost equal to 0 0.6214 miles. So these wavy equal signs means approximately or about. One mile is about, 1.609 kilometers, and one kilometer is about 0 0.6214 miles. Some major highways uh, have a speed limit of 70 miles per hour. How can Reese estimate the SI equivalent of 70 miles per hour? Okay, so in this situation here, we're being told that one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. So this is telling me my number of miles. And since I know my number of miles, miles per hour, I can convert that to kilometers by taking this 70 and multiplying it by 1.609. And what that's gonna give me is, so 70 times 1.609 is going to give us 112.63 kilometers. Actually, no, this was a speed, so this would be 112.63 kilometers per hour, kmph. So, 70 miles an hour or 70 miles per hour would get be 112.63 kilometers per hour. B then says how can he calculate the SI equivalent of 70 miles per hour? Well, we just did part A and part B together there. So then part C says the speed on the Trans Canada Highway outside of Cornerbrook is 80 kilometers per hour. What is the imperial equivalent of the speed limit? So this time we're being given a distance in 80 kilometers. And since we know one kilometer is equal to 0 0.6214 miles, the way we could solve this one is by taking 80 kilometers and multiplying that by 0 0.6214. And that gives us 49.712 miles per hour. So we know that 80 kilometers is the equivalent of 49.72 miles per hour. So when we... Oh, one second here. So now when we scroll down here and we see the answer. So here they estimated that one mile is about 1.6 kilometers. 1.6 is close to one and a half. So half of 70 is 35. So 70 miles plus 35 is 105. So they estimate it to be 105 kilometers per hour. So that's a great way to do an estimate. 
Now, when they actually calculate it out, just like we did up top there, she takes 70 miles per hour, miles and multiplies that by 1.609, and that gives us about 112.63 kilometers, which is exactly what we calculated up top here. Next, it wanted us to take the 80 kilometers and convert that to miles. We got 49.712, which is close to 50 kilometers an hour. And that is exactly what we got here. This would be rounded to 50 kilometers per hour. So that is how you would convert kilometers to miles and miles to kilometers. So then here we are given another question. Your speed, the speed limit in many American towns and cities is 30 miles per hour. Estimate then calculate uh, the SI equivalent. So in this case here for part A, we can use the same estimate strategy they used up top there. We know that we know that in kilometers uh, is about one and a half, or sorry, that a mile is about one and a half kilometers. So I know that 30 times one half is 15. So 30 plus 15 is 45. So I can estimate that 30 miles per hour is going to be about 45 kilometers. Now, when I want to actually calculate this out, I'm going to take my 30 miles per hour and times that by 1.609. And this will give me the exact number as opposed to my estimate, which was just going to give me a very uh, rounded guess. So we actually worked this out to be 48.27 kilometers. So I can tell that 30 miles per hour, 30 miles per hour is equal to 48.27 kilometers per hour. Now for part B, the speed limit on a private road is 50 kilometers an hour. Estimate then calculate the imperial equivalent. Okay, so in this situation here, I need to convert this over. So I know that one kilometer is equal to zero point six two one four miles, which is about a half. So again, I can estimate that if this is 50 kilometers an hour, my estimate for this one here, for B, my estimate is gonna be equal to 25 miles. But now I'm gonna actually work it out and calculate it. So I'm gonna have 50 kilometers times 0.6214. Now I believe when I work this calculation out, it's gonna actually be a little bit higher than 25 miles, but this was just my estimate. So I have 50 kilometers and I'm multiplying that by 0.6214, and that equals, ooh, I was off by a little bit. That is gonna equal 31.07. So I can say 50 kilometers per hour is equal to 31.07 miles per hour. So that's how we do miles into kilometers and kilometers into miles. So now let's look at the questions that, oh, look at the questions in the book that we're gonna have to complete here. Now, we'll scroll down. Oh, no, it's still not locked. There we go. Oh. There we are. Okay. Oh, this A wants to follow us. Funny. Oh, 
Okay, so here we go. So now we're coming down and now you were assigned, I believe, questions one to eight. Okay, so questions one to eight here on page 89. So I'll go over these with you. First question, and actually comes down here, we have a little FYI. So it's good to read these FYIs. They sometimes can give us some information. The Newfoundland and Labrador Snowmobile Federation, the NLSF, governs 16 volunteer snowmobile clubs across the island portions of the province. The, M the NLSF maintains and grooms a trail network of approximately 3,700 kilometers. How many miles is this? Okay, so when we get down to question four, we will look into this a little bit more. So let's come back up here to question number one. And question number one is pretty straightforward. So question number one, it says, convert each SI distance to imperial units. Express each answer to the nearest tenth. That's, now keep this in mind here, expressing each unit to the nearest tenth. So this means you only want to have one decimal place. So that will tell us how, how to round our answers. So the first question is, is they want us to convert these kilometers into miles. And they're telling us our conversion again right here. One kilometer is about 0 0.6214 miles. So what we're going to do for each of these, and I'm just going to do the first two just to kind of get you started and I'll let you do the rest. So for A, for number 1A, we are given 10 kilometers and we need to convert that into miles. So we're going to multiply that by 0 0.6214. So when we go to do that, we multiply 10 times 0 0.6214 and we get an answer of 6.214. But the question told us it only wants us to give it to the nearest tenth, which would be this decimal place. So we look to this decimal place to see if we wanna round this up to a higher number or round this down to a lower number. And since we have a one right here, that's gonna keep this the same. So we're gonna just say that this is really just equal to 6.2 miles. So I can say that 10 kilometers is equal to 6.2 miles. So now when we look at B, we have 25 kilometers and that's going to get multiplied by the same amount. Oh, I forgot my M for kilometers. Kilometers, and we're going to multiply this by 0 0.6214, and that is going to equal 25 times 0 0.6214, 15.535. So again, it only wants us to round this to one decimal place. So we have 15.535. So these two numbers here need to go. And since this is a three, it's gonna keep my five the same. We're not gonna round up, we're gonna leave it at a five. So it's really 15.5 miles. So 15.5 miles, oh, wrong spot. Fifteen point five miles. So now I will do C, and I'll leave the other three for you to finish on your own. So for C, we have sixty kilometers, and that's going to get multiplied by zero point six two one four. So when we have sixty times zero point six two one four, we get 
37.284. Now in this situation here, we have an eight right here. So we're only supposed to round to one decimal place, but this eight is gonna cause our two to round up to a three. So we actually are gonna get 37.3 miles. So here we have 37.3 miles. So there's A, B, and C done for you. I'm sure after seeing that you should be able to complete D, E, and F. So now I'm gonna move on to number two. So now number two, we're doing uh, very similar to what we were doing in number one. So number two, we're converting miles. So here we have our sets of miles right here, converting them into kilometers using the conversion rate of 1.609 because we learned that one mile is about 1.609 kilometers. So now for number two, A, we have 10 miles, and that's going to get multiplied by 1.609. And what that's going to equal is 16.09. So 16.09, it tells us that we want to express each answer to the nearest tenth. So again, just like in the previous question, a tenth is just the first decimal place. And here we have two decimal places, but this nine is gonna cause that zero to round up to a one. So it's going to be 16.1 kilometers. So I can say 10 miles is equal to 16.1 kilometers. Now for B, I'm taking 25 miles. Notice how the amounts up here, 10 kilometers, 25 kilometers, 60 kilometers, 10 miles, 25 miles, 60 miles. Notice our answers aren't the same because they're not the same conversion. 10 miles is not the same as 10 kilometers. I think we should be aware of that by now. Okay, so 25 miles times 1.609 is going to give us 40.225. So again, we need to round this to one decimal place, and that two is going to keep that other two staying. So we have 40.2 kilometers. Forty point two kilometers. Now, okay, so now Looks like everything needs to get stuck, it needs to get attached. I was unaware that that needed to all get done, but all right, we'll do it. Okay. So now when we go to, oh my, that's still not, not, not right. Okay, we'll try this one more time. There's still some things that just don't want to, don't want to be equals. But all right, there we go. There we go.
Okay, here we go. So there we go. So now we're on to number 2C. Now that we have that all straightened away, number 2C. This time we have 60 miles. And we're still going to be using the conversion rate 1.609 kilometers. So 60 miles times 1.609 gives us 96.54. Now, this four is gonna keep our five rounded to a five. So we're going to say that this is 96.5 kilometers. So there's one, two done for us. Now you can finish off D, E, and F on your own following these same steps. Now let's look at number three. Oh, okay, looks like this is always gonna have to get grouped up with everything. All right, so now we're looking at number three and number three. So number three is saying to us, Lily's car measure, measures distance in kilometers. Approximately how long will it take her to drive each distance in number two if she travels at a rate of 100 kilometers per hour? Okay, so she's traveling at a rate of 100 kilometers per hour. So I will do the three that we've got done. You can finish the rest of number two. So when we're looking at number three, they want us to figure out how long oh, how long it's going to take how long it's going to take for her to travel these distances if she's traveling at 100 kilometers per hour so in this situation here you're going to take the distances. So the first one here, so this is two, so I'm gonna put three A right next to number two here. So three A is going right here. And we have the distance of 16.1 kilometers. And we know that she is traveling at 100 uh, kilometers per hour. So we'll divide this by the 100 kilometers per hour. Oh, per hour, there should be a H right there. Per hour. So 16.1 divided by 100. gives us equals 0 0.161 hours. Now, this is 0 0.161 hours, but if we wanted to convert this into minutes, all we'd need to then do is if I multiply this by 60, that is telling, that's gonna give us 9.66 minutes. And if I take that 0.66 and times that by 60, I get 39. So this is going to take us 9 minutes, 39, or sorry, I guess that would round up to 40. 9 minutes and 40 seconds. So now let's look at B. So if we're looking at B, we're traveling 40.2 kilometers. Divide that by 100 kilometers per hour, which is telling me that this is going to be a little bit more, or sorry, a little bit less than a half hour if we're doing this correctly. So we have 40.2 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.402 hours, 
So we times that by 60 minutes gives us 24.2 or 0.12 minutes. So we'll say it's going to be approximately 24 minutes. And then finally for C, we have 96.5 kilometers per hour. So this should be very, very close to one full hour. We'll divide this by 100 uh, kilometers per hour. 96.5 divided by 100 gives us 0 0.9 six five and if we multiply that by 60 because there's 60 minutes in one hour that's why i've been using 60 right here right here and right here is there's 60 minutes per hour so now if i take that and i times that by 60 i get 57.9 minutes so that gave us 57.9 and I know that if I take 0 0.9 and times that by 60, I get 50. So it's going to be 57 minutes and 54 seconds. Or if you just wanted to round that up to 58 minutes. So it will take approximately 58 minutes to travel 96 kilometers if you're traveling at 100 kilometers per hour. Okay, so that is how we do number three. Now, I'll leave it for you to finish the rest of number three uh, by, when, when, by finishing number, the rest of number two. I'll let you, that should allow you all to finish number three as well. So now, we're going to move on to number four. So number four says... Jonah is preparing a brochure for a snowmobile club. He needs to convert some trail distances from kilometers to miles uh, for American visitors. Each distance, or what is each distance in miles? So here we have it in kilometers, and we want to change it to miles. And if we recall, every time we have kilometers and we want to turn it into miles, so there's where we had kilometers, and we turn it into miles by multiplying it by 0 0.6214. So we're essentially going to do the same thing here. Now I'll do the first two, and I'm sure you should be able to finish the final three off. So here for number four, number 4A. So for number 4A, we have to convert 42 kilometers 4A, actually I'm going to bring 4A down here a little bit lower. So 4A, I'll bring right over to here, 4A. And we're taking 42 kilometers. And we're going to multiply that by 0 0.6214. So 42 times 0 0.6214 gives us 26.0988 miles. So this question here doesn't tell us to convert this to the whole number. However, since all of our distances here are in without decimal places, we can round this. So this is just gonna to round to an even 26 miles. So there's 4A done for us. And now when we go on to do 4B, put 4B a little bit over here, number 4B, Number 4B is going right here. And 4B, they want us to convert 66 kilometers 
into miles. So 66 kilometers times 0 0.6214 is going to give us 41.0124 miles, which we will just round to 41 miles. So there's number 4A and 4B done. So now if there is any additional questions on number four, just feel free to let me know. But I believe that should be all you need to do, uh, C, D, and E. So give those a try. Question number five. So we're on the next page now. Now we're on to page 91. Page 91, we have question number five. Noah is training for a long distance event. In one week, he ran the following distances. So here's the distances Noah ran on each day from Sunday to Saturday, right here. So it asks, what is the total distance Noah ran in kilometers? So they want to know what the total distance that he ran was in kilometers. And here we have all of the distances he ran. So all we really need to do in this situation is add all of these together. So if we take our calculator and we add these together, 10.2 plus 15.6 plus 12.1 plus 17.5 plus 15.7 plus 19.2 plus uh, 20.4. So that should be all seven distances in there. And when you add th those together, they come to a total of 110.7 kilometers. So the answer to A in kilometers is 110.7 kilometers. Now, it wants us to know what this distance was in miles. So now that we know what our kilometers is, we can multiply this by 0 0.6214. So times that by 0 0.6214 gives us 68.78898. So since all of these numbers here in kilometers were to one decimal place, we will round this number to one decimal place, and this seven would get rounded up by that eight. So really, this would become 68. Actually, I don't need to write that there. So the answer would be 68.7 miles of how far Noah ran that week. So now, number six. Michella, Michella, I'm not sure how you say that. Michella, Michella is researching the lengths of rivers in Newfoundland and Labrador. What is each length in kilometers? So this is very similar to question number four. Here we have four different rivers. Each of them are now measured in kilometers. Churchill River, X Points River, Grand, uh, Gander River, Fraser River. And there they are in miles, and they want us to turn these into kilometers. So all we need to do is take each of these amounts and multiply them by 1.609, and that will tell us what they are in kilometers. So 532 miles times that by 1.609 gives us 855.988 miles, or sorry, kilometers, that's in kilometers, not miles. Point eight, eight kilometers. Now we'll round this one up because over here we have whole numbers. We don't have decimals. We'll round this to the nearest whole number. That nine would round that to a six. So this would really be 856 kilometers. Now I'll do part B. So for part B, we're going to multiply this one as well by 1.609. 
So 153 times 1.609 is 246.177 kilometers. Which again, because we're gonna round these to the nearest whole number, this one makes this six stay a six. So we can say it is 246 kilometers. So now that I did A and B, I'll leave C and D for you to do. So now, oh, that's all gonna get put, add together here. So let's see. Group it all together and we're good. Let's scroll down here now and have a look at number seven. So number seven, Jack lives in Stephenville and drives the truck through much of the East Coast of Canada and the United States. While approaching the Canadian border into New Brunswick from Maine, he sees the following sign, convert this distance to meters. So here it's saying three quarters of a mile. So this is the trick. They're trying to throw at a fraction at us to see if this can trip us up. So there's a couple of things we need to know here. First off, we need to be able to work with fractions because we have one right here. Converting that fraction into a decimal should be our first step. So really, if we have three quarters of a mile, or mile, that is gonna equal three divided by four, which gives us the decimal of zero point, or sorry, zero point seven five miles. So now that we have a decimal number here, it should be very simple for us to figure out exactly how many kilometers it is. So the same way we did it before, 0 0.75 miles. And so now that we're dealing with miles, we know that we should be able to convert this over to kilometers. Now we did, we remember we multiply, we know what our kilometers it is, we multiply it by 0 0.625 uh, or 6214, but since this is in miles, we're going to multiply that by 1.609. Okay. Yes. So we have 0 0.75 miles, and we multiply that by 1.609 kilometers. Oh, that's right, that will convert it to kilometers. So this is going to equal 0 0.75 times 1.609 is going to be 1.2 zero six seven five kilometers so that is how we do number seven now on to number eight and this was the last one in this section you had to do so now number seven or sorry number eight sherry's car consumes about seven liters of fuel per 100 kilometers. The gas tank holds 50 liters. So A asks us, estimate the distance in kilometers the Sherry could travel on one full tank of gas. So seven is close to 10. And if I know that for every, I can travel 100 kilometers for say 10, and then I have, there'd be five tens and 50, so five times 100. So I'm going to estimate that Sherry's gonna be able to travel about 500, oh, 500 kilometers, KMs, on one tank of gas. So now, 
The next part wants me to estimate this distance in miles. So if I can get 100, mi or 100 kilometers, and I know my distance now in kilometers and I want to convert that to miles, I can say that 100 kilometers times 0 0.6214 is gonna equal about 62.14 miles. So again, if I take 62 and I multiply that by five, I get about 310. So then for part B, my estimate in miles is uh, I'm gonna 310 miles is my estimate for how far that she's gonna be able to travel. So now C says, Sherry, uh, Sherry's gas warning light goes on. She fills up the tank or the gas tank just after crossing the United States. How many gallons of gas does the fuel tank hold? Okay, so this is giving us a new conversion rate. We're being told that one gallon is about 3.785 liters. And we know that this tank can hold 50 liters. So, if I was to take my 50 liters and divide that by 3.785, we should get approximately how many gallons this is going to be. So 50 divided by 3.785 gives me 13 point two gallons. So her gas tank should hold about 13.2 gallons of gasoline. Now, D says a, at US dollars, three dollars and ten cents per gallon, how much will it cost to, uh, how much would the gasoline cost? So she's gonna buy 13.2 gallons. And it's gonna cost her $3.10 US per gallon. So that leaves me with 13.2 times $3.10. So 13.2 times 3.10 gives us $40.92. So it's going to cost her about $40.92 to fill up her tank of gas. Then it says, on that day, one US dollar is worth a dollar five Canadian. How much does the gas cost Sherry in Canadian dollars? So this is US dollars. So what we need to now do is convert that by multiplying our US price by the Canadian dollars right there. So we have $40.92 times 1.05. So 40. 0.92 times 1.05 gives us $42.96. So now when we talk about money, we can't have three numbers after a decimal point because we only our, our cents end at the at the one hundredths or at the this number right here, the second place after the decimal. So this six is gonna cause that six to round up. So really, it's going to cost her $42.97. And this is actually in, this is actually in Canadian dollars. So Sherry will have to spend $42.97 in Canadian dollars. So that was all of the on-the-job two questions you had to do. 
So I also believe you were assigned these first five questions here in the working with it section. Oh, this was supposed to stay up here. There we go. So there we go. When we come down and we look at question number one, so we have these five questions here. I'll go over the first part and explain what you need to do, but I'm going to leave these for you to try to do on your own. And if you have trouble, you can email me. It says provincial fish regulations state that salmon over 63 centimeters in length must be released. 63 centimeters. Use your, uh, collection of personal references to estimate 63 centimeters. Ask a classmate. So for part B, we are asking a classmate. Well, this one here is going to be difficult to do for online learning. So we can just scratch part B out. Don't worry about this one. Then this one here, we should be able to convert 63 centimeters into inches. Because remember, we talked about this before. One inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So just use that conversion rate to figure out how many inches 63 centimeters is. And then what imperial reference could you use to estimate this length? So once you figure that out, you can then decide if you want to use inches or feet for part D. So now for part or for number two, number two, after a blizzard, vehicles drove through a snow tunnel on the Trans Canada Highway. That's a pretty big snow tunnel. Use the vehicle as a reference and estimate the height of the snowbank on the left in either meters or feet. So you should know based on standing next to a car that a car is about, give or take, we'll say five feet high. So we can say that height of that car is about five feet high. So if we were to try to draw another car here, that's about two, that's about three. So we're gonna need about three car heights in order to figure that one out. Now, it tells us to use either meters or feet. I chose feet because I know uh, I, I can estimate the height of a car in feet. I could have also chosen meters because I can say that five feet would really be about one and a half meters. So a little over one and a half. So I'll say 1.6 meters, give or take. So I could have said 1.6 and 1.6 would give us 3.2 and then 4.8. So 4.8, roughly five meters. Here we can say that it's gonna be about 15 feet because we have five feet, five feet, and then five feet. So five feet times three is about 15 feet. That's our estimate. So now it tells us to convert 15 feet into meters. So I can say that there is approximately, well, 15 feet, I can say there is approximately here um, an estimate of 15 feet. So since this is just an estimate in feet, I can now turn this into inches, turn that into centimeters, and centimeters into feet. So I can say that if I have 15 feet, I multiply that by 12, and that would be 180 inches. So I know that for every inch, there is 2.54 centimeters. So, so if I was to multiply 180 by 2.54, I get 
457.2 centimeters. So now that I know how many centimeters I have, I can take that 457.2 centimeters and I can divide that by 100 and that's going to give me 4.572 meters. So earlier I estimated that this would be approximately 5 meters based on 1.6, 1.6, 1.6. I said that would be about 48 and we wound up with, and I rounded up to 5. So now I can see that it's going to be 4.572, which really, if I'm going to try to round this to one uh, decimal place, this would really be 4.6 meters. So my estimate of 4.8 wasn't too far off. And so 15 feet is about 4.6 meters. And that's what we're estimating the height of these snowbanks to be. So now, when we look at number three here, we look at number three. Oh, we don't want those estimates to go anywhere. Okay, so when we look here at number three. Read the information about the East Coast Trail located on the Avalon Peninsula. Convert each SI measurement to the equivalent imperial measurement. The East Coast Trail is approximately 504 kilometers long. So I'm going to underline all of the measurements we're going to need to convert. 540 kilometers. Then it says a 254 kilometer section of the trail uh, meets world-class hiking standards. This section of the trail runs 34 kilometers north of the Quiddy Vitty Village in St. John's uh, to Pooch Cove. It stretches 220 kilometers from Fort Amherst to St. John's to Kappa Hayden to the southern on the southern shore. At about 296 kilometers of the trail are under development. Okay, so here we have one, two, three, four, five measurements that they want converted into. They want those converted into miles. So we have those five there that are now going to get converted into miles. And as we saw up here, when we know what it is in kilometers and we want to turn it into miles, so when we know kilometers, just like we did up top here, when we know kilometers and we want to convert to miles, we use 0 0.6214, 0 0.6214. So back down here to number three, we're going to write each of these out. So in number three, we have 540 kilometers times 0 0.6214. And we get 335.556 miles. But again, since these are given to us in whole numbers, we might as well round this to the whole number. So this five would cause that five there to become a six. So we can say that this is gonna equal 336 miles. So I'm only gonna do the next one and I'll leave the last three for you to finish. So next we have 254 uh, kilometers. We're going to multiply that again by 0 0.6214. So 254 times 0 0.6214. That's going to give us 157.8356. But just like the last one, we want to round. And that 8 right here is going to cause that 7 to round up. So that's 158 miles. 
So I'll leave you to figure out these last three. Each one of these numbers, you're just gonna multiply by 0 0.6214. And that should be what you need to do in order to, to finish this off here. And if you have any questions at all with, about this, then feel free to just let me know. Feel free to ask. So now when we move on to this next question here, question four, and this one here has a bit of a ruler for us. And we can use the ruler right here in the question to figure it out. It says the Bethok stone tools shown were found at the colony of Avalon. The object with a small stem is an arrow point. The other objects may have been used as knives. So we don't know what these were used for. They're archaeological finds and they're being measured. And it says, estimate the length of the arrowhead in imperial units. So the first thing we, we, we wanna do is we know that if we have 2.54, so in other words, I'll make a mark here on our ruler. So we can say that 2.54, which would be right about here on our ruler, that is about one inch. So that distance from here to here, so from this first point to that first point is about an inch. So if that's the case, and I'm looking at this first arrowhead, I know this first arrowhead is about a centimeter. And I know that I need 2.54 of those to make a full inch. So I'd need another full one and a half. So this isn't even quite half an inch right here. This here is about, so this here is one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, this here is about two fifths of an inch. So two fifths of an inch would be, Well, 40%. So we'll say that this here is about zero. This first one here, we're going to estimate it to be about 0 0.4 inches. Now, this second one here is bigger than a centimeter. So if we're looking at this second one here, it starts right here and it ends right here. So this is 1.2 centimeters, which is slightly bigger than that one there, than the first one. So 1.2 is closer to a half. So I'm gonna estimate this one here is about 0 0.5 inches. Now this one here, we can see is starting right here and ending over here. So it's longer, but not by much than the other one. So I can estimate that this one here might be we'll say 0 0.6. But this final one is almost, if you look at it, almost the same size, so just slightly smaller than this one here. So I might say that this one here is 0 0.45 inches. So for A, those were my estimates. Now for B, estimate the length of the longest knife in Imperial. Oh, so this is estimate the length of the arrowhead in Imperial. So it was just this one they wanted us to do. Okay, well we did all of them. Then it says estimate the length of the longest knife in Imperial units. And we did that here. Explain how to convert between SI and Imperial units. Well, we know that for C, Oh, for C, that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So that is our conversion. And finally, number five. Oh. So number five, actually, let me just get all of these points here. Graft together. All right, 
So now, number five, this is the final question. Number five, the flowing river, or the following rivers flow into the Atlantic Ocean. Rich River is the longest. What is the total length of the four rivers in kilometers? What is the total length of the four rivers in miles? Okay, great. So we need to convert each of these ones here into something that we can use. So into miles as an example, or kilometers. So for this first one, I know that since this is in meters, I know that there is 1000 meters in a kilometer. So if I take this first one here and I divide it by 1000, divide it by 1000, I get this being, oh. this is gonna be 856 kilometers. So now I have that one in kilometers. So in order to solve this, we're going to need to have all of them in the same units, which might as well at this point be kilometers, since it's asking for the total length in kilometers in this question here. So yards, what I want to do for yards is I can convert this to miles first, if I wanted to, or I convert this into feet. I think the easiest way would be to convert this into miles. We learned back in unit uh, 2.1 that there is approximately 1,760 yards in a mile. So if I divide this by 1,760, That'll tell me how many miles this is. And then once I know this in miles, I convert that to kilometers. So 7,736,000 7, um, yards, 736,000 yards, divide that by 1,760 gives us 418.18 miles. Now, if I multiply my miles by 1.609, this will tell me my kilometers. And that would be 672.854 kilometers. So now I have two different measurements in kilometers. I only need to convert this final one here, miles into kilometers, and I can do that by multiplying this by 1.609. So 1900 times 1.609 gives me 3057.15 kilometers. So now I have all of my measurements converted into kilometers. And this one's already in kilometers, which allows me to do part B. Well, actually part A says, which river is the longest? So if we're looking at this in, in kilometers, this is 856 kilometers. This one here is 700 and uh, sorry, 672 kilometers. This one here is 3057 kilometers. And this one here is 1270. So for part A, which one is the longest, we can say that it is indeed the St. Lawrence River, which is the longest. Because that would be 3057.1 kilometers. So now for part B, it asks us, what is the total length of the four rivers in kilometers? So we need to now add those four numbers together. So I'm going to add the four numbers that I have highlighted in red. This one, this one, this one, and this one. So for part B, I'm going to add those numbers together. So I have 856. I have 672.854. I have 3057.1. 
and then I have 100 or 1,270 kilometers. So I add these all together. So 856 plus 672.854 plus 3057.1 plus, oh, plus finally 1270 gives us a total of 5,855.954 kilometers. So because none of these have decimal points, I'm gonna round this number. So this nine, this round of 5,856 kilometers. And that is how I do B. Now part C, what is the total length of the four rivers in miles? Okay, so now that I have this in kilometers, I wanna turn this into miles. I multiplied this number. So I'm gonna take my 5,000, so for part C, I'm gonna take my 5,856 and multiply that by 0 0.6214. So 5,856 times 0 0.6214 gives us 3,638.9 miles. Now we can round that to 3,639 miles. And there we go. So if you have any questions about any of these here, please email me and let me know right away. Uh, and I hope this video was helpful. Have a good day.